Hello and welcome to this first video about Photoshop and specifically here working with layers. The big idea that we're trying to get across here is that we want to be able to make edits in a non-destructive manner. So that means that the original image is preserved and basically any adjustments that we do are kind of layered on top but at the bottom it's still our original um, image. So what we're going to try to do here is just try to fix up a few pictures and just do it the most simplest way possible using Photoshop. Now, of course, you could use a number of different programs um, to do some editing of images, but we're going to stick with Photoshop here. Um, for this purpose, I guess it is probably a bit of an overkill, but we can simply use, um, as it says here, the adjustment image and then auto tone. And there's three adjustments that we can try, basically auto color, auto contrast, and auto tone. And then you can sort of take a look at and figure out which one you think looks best. So to practice this, I'm going to grab this image and you can simply right click on it and copy it. And so we'll take that into Photoshop. Now when you've copied a file like that, so that image, it will automatically adjust to the right size. So I'm going to click on new file here. And what you'll notice is that the clipboard has adjusted to that size of that image. So it's a pretty good quality image there. I'm just going to create it from that clipboard, leave all the other settings there. And if I press Control V, hopefully that image appears. And so we've got these lovely flowers. Now what we want to do, uh, let's just come over here for a second. And this is kind of getting in the way. <laughs> I think we're okay. I'm just going to pull that one out of there. And you can just drag that down and then get rid of that background. Now I'm going to create a new layer on top and I'll see if I need to do that. It might do this already. So I'm going to come up to image, just like it said, um, look for adjustments. Now here, these would be all the adjustments that you could do. And we'll get into these as we go. But what we're going to try here at the start is just the auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color. Let's just go one by one. We'll start with auto tone there. And so, of course, it says that is not light because we're not in that layer. So I'm going to click on this one. And probably what I should do, let's do this first. Let's, instead of what I did there, I'm just going to drag it down and delete it. I'm going to copy this one. So I'm simply going to make a copy of this one. So if I drag it down, not to the garbage can, but to the little plus beside it, you'll notice that we've got this one here that's a copy. And then what I'm going to do is just change the name, double click, and we'll do this. I believe the first one there was Auto Tone. We'll just call it Auto Tone. And so when I go back up to Image, and we'll click on Auto Tone, and you can see that it's kind of, you know, increased the contrast. Um, definitely the darker areas have been made darker. And what's nice about this is if I got this uh, as a separate layer, all I have to do is go back and forth, and I can kind of see what's gone on. Like I said, probably an improvement. This has a bit of a warmer, sort of almost like a sepia tone to it. But this is definitely a little bit crisper and probably um, better if we, <laughs> if we can make that judgment. Let's try this again, but with the next one. So the next one there, let's just try to get those in order. Um, we're going to do auto contrast and auto color. So auto contrast, let's duplicate this layer again. So we're going to go down to the plus. Uh, let's rename this auto contrast. And while we're at it, we might as well duplicate it again and call this one auto color. I'm just going to turn off auto color for the moment and focus on auto, uh, auto contrast. Notice here, you know which layer you're in by um, the highlight that's there. So when you click on it, you're in that layer. I've turned off the eyes so that we can't see these ones at the moment. So really, um, we're just looking at the auto contrast layer at the moment because it's completely covering um, layer one, which is our original, although at the moment, if I turn that on and off, they're interchangeable. But let's apply that uh, auto contrast there. So image, auto contrast, and there we go. So maybe better. Um, again, this would be something where you could turn this one off, back to the original, turn this one on, and then you might have to, you know, sort of alternate between these two and see. Um, at the moment, the auto contrast keeps some of that warmth, I would say. Whereas the auto tone has gone, you know, like pretty well cleared all the way that, like I mentioned, that sepia sort of warmness to it, that Kodachrome perhaps look. So we'll try the last one though, auto color. And so again, I'm going to go back to the original, turned all the layers off except for auto color well, and the bottom one because it's not really, 
doesn't really matter. It's been hidden. And I'm going to go down to Auto Color. And yeah, so that's that one there. And again, so definitely I'd say an improvement. And then it would be a matter of which one do you like better. So you might want to sort of go between. I'm kind of liking that auto contrast a little bit more. And then maybe with this one. Hmm. <laughs> it's a matter of judgment. It would depend on what I'm trying to do with it. Like I said, the auto color to me feels, or sorry, auto contrast feels a lot warmer. The auto tone has sort of a bit of a darker uh, feel to it. And then between these two, I think I like the auto color better. So overall, perhaps the auto color would be my favorite. It's a bit warmer, but not as sort of blurry as the other one. Ah, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> now, um, in terms of saving this, so when you save, um, it originally came in as a JPEG. And now that we've created layers, we've created a PSD file, a Photoshop document. And so they both have, you know, their, their purposes. So let's just take a look here at saving. If I wanted to maintain these layers, so if I wanted to have all these layers available to me still, what I wanted to do is file and save and save it as a PSD file. So this will automatically save as a PSD file. You can save onto your computer and find a spot. And you can see here that it's saving as a PSD file. So I think what I'll just do for my purpose, you should save to the H drive. I'm just going to go into my desktop. I'm going to create a new folder just with comp uh, sense photos, just to try to keep things a little bit clean. And then we could try, I'm just going to call this unit one, lesson one, maybe up to you. <laughs> lesson one sample. Okay. So there, now it's saved as a Photoshop and I just say, okay. And that way, um, if I want to come back, edit the layers, I can't, I haven't lost anything. If we want to export it, so keep it available for a different computer, um, then what we would do is come under export here. And so you can export as a PNG, you can click on export as, um, export as will give you the options. So up here, format, JPEG, PNG, and a GIF or GIF. Um, basically the difference between these two, one will preserve transparency, which is your PNG and a JPEG, um, won't have uh, transparency. So anything that's sort of white, like you want the background to be see-through, it will just become white. Uh, whereas the PNG will actually preserve it. So very good for logos, or if you've cut something out, out and you want sort of a different background in there, um, the JPEG, uh, sorry, the PNG would be preferable over the JPEG. GIFs or GIFs are a bit of a more of a reduced, compressed thing. And also you can do sort of simple videos for it, but we'll leave that there. Otherwise, I'd probably leave everything as it is. So I'll save it as a JPEG, um, export. And again, if I wanted to go back, whoops, sorry, my old car there, you can see. So going back to my desktop and then finding that um, file, what did I say? Computer Essentials. Do, 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 do. There it is. And, you know, it would save it as a JPEG there. Okay. And you could save that. So go save. And once that's done, there we go. Now, I'll just sort of show you the difference here. So if I open up that file as well, desktop and all my stuff here, computer essentials photos. Um, let's see, details. I want to go to view my details. Do, 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 do. Why can't I see that? Oh, view, sorry, there we go. So we want to do it by details here. What I'm just going to show you is the size difference. So the JPEG, because it's all been compressed, the layers have been lost. You can see it's down to 567 kilobytes. So half a megabyte, really. This here is about almost 33 um, megabytes. So what's that, you know, about 60 times larger, uh, much, much bigger. But like I said, depending on your purpose, this might be what you want. Right. So that's all really this level or sorry, this lesson is about. Um, you can, like I said, try those. You can practice on this one, see what would work better. Um, I've talked about sort of saving here and uh, a little bit more information. 
And then finally, there are a bunch of uh, shortcuts here that you could take a look at. Obviously, um, we haven't talked about all these different things and you'll sort of see them as you go. Um, I could just briefly mention that uh, what I find most useful up and down with the scroll wheel will obviously move this image up or down. The more important one perhaps is holding um, the Alt key down. That will zoom in and zoom out. So wherever your mouse is, it will zoom in or zoom out on the point. Um, I find that very useful for navigating around. You can also hold the Control key and the scroll wheel and that will pan the image left to right. Of course, you can do that down here as well, but it's kind of like an extra movement to come down here. And same thing up and down. Um, there is the movement, obviously, with this bar here. All right, I think we'll end this video here, and hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to apply auto tone, auto color, auto contrast, the concept of layers, the ability to turn those layers on or off, and how to save the images.